Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number 23. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're on the sheet five number summary. That's because we want to talk about the five number summary. Now it's straightforward to calculate. You got to calculate the min, quartile one to three, and the max. Those are the five numbers. Hey, the five number summary provides information like min, max, the median, you can figure out the range quickly. It gives you the quartiles. You can figure out the quartile range quickly. And it's the basis to build a box plot, which we'll see in just a second. Now, our example here is a sample of salaries for accountants in Oakland, California. Here's our column here, and we want to calculate our five number summary. Now, we're using .exc. Quartile exclusive, it excludes 0 and 1. We saw back in the video on quartile that you could use I and C and use 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it would automatically calculate the five number summary. We're going to use the min, the max, and the quartile function. So in cell C13 equals min, click in the top cell, Control Shift down arrow to highlight that whole range, and I'm going to Shift Enter to put that in the cell and push the cell up. Now I'm going to use quartile equals quartile.exc, the array. Click on the top cell, Control Shift down arrow, F4 because we want to lock it with our dollar signs and jump the screen back up, and then comma, and I'm going to use my arrow keys to get to my one, two, three. Control Enter. And now I can copy this down. And there's quartile, one, two, three. Click on the last cell, and I'm just checking to see if it's locked and if it's got the right cell reference. Yes, it does. Enter equals MAX tab. Click in the top cell. Control Shift down arrow, Shift Enter to put that in the cell and push the cell up. So there it is, five number summary. So the min salary for an accounting position in our sample for a month was 2,510. The max was 6,987. Quartile 1 to 3, there they are. If we subtracted 4,003 from 4,664, that's quartile 1 from quartile 3. That would be the inner quartile range. And we can see that about 7,000 to 2,500, the difference between those two is the range. Now let's go over to the sheet five number summary and box plot. Now in this class, we're not going to build this chart in Excel, because although it can be done, it's quite tedious. I do have other videos on how to build box plots. Now here's the deal. Here's some quizzes. And this articulates the five number summary. So the rectangle in the middle represents quartile 1, which is 17.5 points, all the way up to quartile 3, which is about 30. We can clearly see the middle 50% of the values go from about 30 to about 17. The line down the middle, that's quartile 2. Or the median, it looks like 27. We also put the mean up here, right? Remember, if the mean is below the median, then there's probably some small values pulling the mean down. We can also see the little whiskers here that extends to the biggest value inside the lower limit, which happens to be our min of 10. This whisker up here extends and shows the max, which also is inside our upper limit. Now these limits are created. We had 0 and 47.5. If we had values, they would be marked as an x or a square or something. And that would represent an outlier, an unusually small or unusually large value. Now, in this class, we're going to see how to calculate all of these pieces from this data set. You can sketch out a box plot like this. I'm going to scoot this off to the side. All right, so here's our data set. We will calculate equals min, highlight the whole range, enter equals q, and the very first function is quartile.exc, so tab, highlight the range, and I'm immediately going to hit F4 to lock that range, comma, and quartile, one arrow, arrow, over to the right, control enter, and copy it just down to the third quartile. 
the max equals max. There's our range. Enter. Our inner quartile range, that is quartile 3 to quartile 1, and Enter. Now, to calculate the lines up at the top, our textbook uses the multiplier 1.5 to determine an unusually small or large value. There are other multipliers, like 2.2. There's some notes down here if you want to look at that. We're going to use 1.5. And here's the calculation for the lower limit. Equals, we're going to actually start with quartile 1, and we're going to subtract our multiplier times the inner quartile range. Boom. Now, this is negative, right? A quiz can't go below 0, so we would convert that to 0. Notice the rule right there. Our upper limit, hey, we're going to extend past quartile 3 plus our multiplier times the inner quartile range, and Enter. Now, those are our two assumed marking positions. Any values that we find past these two would be considered outliers. If you wanted to change it to 2.2, boom, there would be different lower and upper limits. Control-Z. Now, I'd like to actually count to see if there's any values below or above our limits. Now, this one we don't have to worry about because the quizzes can't possibly get below 0. Not only that, but on a small data set, we could just eye it. But of course, we have the count ifs functions. And that will allow us to count. Boop, there's all the values. Comma and the criteria. Well, there's the hurdle. Anything above would be considered an outlier. So I need to combine comparative operator and the number. I put the comparative operator in double quotes. The greater than symbol is pointed over there. So if it finds any of these that are bigger than 47.5, then it will be counted. We have to join it, Shift-7, the ampersand to our criteria sitting in the cell, Control-Enter. So there are 0 if I were to. If I had one in here like 50, instantly I would get a count Control Z. Now we need to calculate the mean, average, highlight the range, and Enter. So there we have all of the inputs that will allow us to draw our box plot, a visual summary of our five number summary. Now we have one more topic. Here we considered outliers using this 1.5 rule. Let's scroll over here and look at the sheet outliers. Now, we talked about z and our normal curve with plus or minus 3 standard deviations as being really rare. So another way to calculate an outlier is simply to check the z. So I'm going to say the particular value minus the mean, F4 key to lock that, close parenthesis, divided by standard deviation, F4. Control Enter, double click and send it down. Now certainly we could go through and eye this. I can already see there's looks like there's one there and there. So we could actually add an extra column and use, since we're checking for positive 3 or negative 3, we could use the ABS, the absolute value. So that will return whatever the number is distance from 0. And I'm going to say anytime you are greater than 3. Now, because we're using a comparative operator directly in our formula, this is a logical formula that will return just a true or a false. Control Enter, double click and send it down. Now notice even here we, we can see the trues now and pick those out. We could come over to this side. We could do a formula like. equals count ifs, and I'll highlight the whole range, control shift down arrow, control backspace to jump the screen back in view, comma, and then because it's a logical, we don't have to put it in double quotes. It is its own data type, neither text nor number, so control enter. Actually, if you hit F2, you see it pop back up to true. At the beginning of the class, we talked about how that's a characteristic of true-false values in Excel. So 
that is another way we could look through the data set and count. Right click, paint brush to copy just the formatting and click. Still another way, watch this, control shift down arrow because we want to highlight the whole column. Now I'm going to scroll back up so you can see that I've highlighted the whole column. We can go to home, conditional formatting, highlight cell rules equal to, and I'm going to type true here. And then instead of accepting the default, I'm going to click the drop down and go to custom format. And now I can do whatever I want. This is our format cells dialog box. I'm going to select red fill, font I want white. Click OK, click OK. I kind of like that way because now we can go through and pick it out. Because a, an outlier could be an actual value that should be in the data set, a value that was mistakenly in the data set, or even typing error. All right, so there you go. Outliers with Z, logical formula, count ifs, and even a little conditional formatting. All right, so we talked a little bit about outliers with the Z rule. We talked about box plot. And we talked about our five number summary. All right, next video, we're going to talk about our last numerical measure, covariance and coefficient of variation for two variables. All right, see you next video.